It is January 2023. If we go back one year ago today, listen, things seemed a little bit rosier. The market was up. All these other things were happening. People's pockets were getting bigger. Real estate was still running. And then seemingly out of nowhere, Russia attacked Ukraine. Um, real estate started going down. The stock market st started going down. Interest rates started going up. Gas prices started going up. Food started going up. And then we started hearing about the crypto drama. All the way till the end of the year, we've had maybe five, six rate increases from 2% to 7%. And now we're in 2023, right? So, so the, the question I have is, what are you going to do about all the external forces that you can't control? None of us can control that. So what are you going to do about it? Who's your top five? What are you doing to make your world better by contributing to something? Are you studying? Are you buying real estate between your ears? What is your mindset as you shift into this? I'm sure your savings account is down. I know the stock market is down. I know we just got through the holidays and New Year's. How do you feel today? And what is your goal for the next 30, 60, 90 days? And how are you going about that? So folks, it's important that you understand where you're at today. We know on a financial freedom map, you have a destination, but a lot of people don't know where they are. So watch this to stop trading time for money because we're going to dig deep into really getting off the back roads and getting on the highway to financial freedom and showing you how to do that in a very smooth manner. And once again, I'm here with my partner, Alexa Criojo. Yes. What's up, Alexa? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Rob? Happy day today. Happy day. Super excited that you're with us. And, you know, I got to ask you, Alexa, when it comes to trading time for money, you, you, you're new in the business. Well, no, you've had a couple of years in the business. You've seen a lot of things as an entrepreneur, right? Yes. That work, but you also have seen things that hasn't worked. Yes. Can you talk about your biggest transition, at least recently, where you're like, wow, I am starting to trade time for money right now. No, I'm actually starting to get time back because my money is on a path or my money coming in is on a path that it wasn't on before this. Yes. So I think the biggest thing for me recently has been realizing I cannot wear all the hats. Yes. <laughs> it's just not efficient, right? When you get to a point where you really want to give the best customer service and serve at the highest level, you literally need help. Yeah. You need a team, you need assistance, whether that's on the back end uh, and, and all those types of things. So for me, it's been outsourcing some of those things, you know, getting good at, you know, maybe the beginning of the process and, hiring someone to help me with that portion of the business. So that's pretty cool. But can I ask you a question? How did you realize that you actually need that kind of help? Was there was there things that you were seeing? Was there people that you modeled there for? Like, what did it look like for you where you realized that, hey, you know what? I got to put money out there so I could, as you like to say, 10x my money on the backside. Yeah. So two things. I mean, if, you know, all the business books that I read say the same thing, right? Can't do it alone. If you want to impact a large group of people or and, and get that message out yeah um you need you need a team yep. right um and i started to realize my stress level was way too high i was my cup wasn't full anymore so i realized if i want to serve my clients and have a full cup to pour into theirs i need to get some time back and so that's that's kind of what i did and what kind of stress were you going through like what was it how were you feeling for post the folks that are watching they could identify with this how because they want to do it themselves what were you feeling what was going on Right, because I'm sure a lot of you out there, right, as entrepreneurs, you're you start out so passionate about what you're doing and you want to control mm -hmm. everything from the first call to the very last call. Yep. But then you eventually you get to have a beautiful problem of you're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have time maybe to follow up the way you want to, maybe, you know, really provide that. 100% customer service. Yep. So you realize that, you know, with the leakage, there there needs to be some solutions there. And w was there somebody that, I know you read a book, but was there people that you knew that were doing it that you kind of modeled after? Or was it something that you said, you know what, let me just hire this person, that person. Was that in, in your career a couple of years ago? Or was that a more recent thing? Oh, that's a more recent thing. I would really? say, you know, working here, um, you know, the, the folks that we work with, yeah. they, you know, they were starting to level up and, and I realized, wait, I mean, even if I work really hard, there's only a limited amount of time in yeah. the day. So I have to find a way to, to multiply my did time. You, did you ask yourself a different question? Like what, what, what actually led to you actually writing a check? How can I be better? How can I be a better agent? How can you be a better advisor? Yeah. And I said, well, if I had a little bit more time, yeah. <laughs> Um, and what what do I do in the business that maybe is not my favorite thing? Yeah. And what can I easily teach someone else to do and and train someone up to be able to do that? I'm OK with letting. 
right yeah. now. And, and you know, it's interesting, folks, because the business we're in, although, you know, we talk about insurance and become your own bank and, you know, there's a level of planning that goes on. But the real the real business that we're in here at Epic is we're in the marketing business, secondary to um, primarily helping people get educated that don't normally get ed educated when it comes to money and proper planning. And I think that's what business that we're, I learned that from Tony Robbins when we say, hey, what business are you in? And somebody say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an agent. Versus, no, what business are you really in? Well, we're in the business of really serving people, giving them strategies, giving them a path, giving them hope. And at the same time, we're in the marketing business. And I think what Alexa was talking about was that on our side of the table, we've we've developed such high power relationships that you know, we've gone from eight to over 2,000 opportunities a month. And when you're a bit, when you're going from trying to book appointments to, um, you know, appointments are coming in your email every day, it is a beautiful gift. But it's almost like if there was a, a room full of food that a dog would just eat itself to death, right? Like there's just too many leads unless you learn to work on the business from your perspective. I think before this model got created, before you started working with us was, Really, we, we asked the question, how can we serve more people? And then all of a sudden the universe conspired and other people came and we started creating these beautiful relationships. When you look at disruption, and right now the last 12 months has been full of disruption, I think that leaders come out of it. And certain people won't come out of it because they're kind of, they're clinging to the status quo of what's happening. When you look at the last 12 months, you know, not market commentary or anything like that, how do you feel, because you said last year, was really your first day on Christmas working with us, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's like 12 months later, right? And, you know, entrepreneurs, acceleration, congruency into action. You did a video about faith and faith just isn't faith. It's faith into action, which I thought was awesome. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like where, where it's been for the last 12 months? We know that you have the problem of you, know, you have to bring people in, but more importantly, the mindset and how... Um, maybe from where you see yourself now that there's a different future that you may not have thought existed. And and you may, you may not, Rob, but I've always thought it, I always thought it was gonna happen. Like, where are you at with that? <laughs> I if, you, mean, if, you take the, if you look at the path over the last 12 months. I mean, I think over the last 12 months, it's just become more clear that I'm going to get there. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I always had big dreams even as a kid, but it's, you don't know how. You yeah. don't know how that's going to happen. I've been in the industry for a while before coming across. How many years? I mean, now it's going to be four, wow. a little over four. So I had already been in the business two years before now, and I, I felt like I could succeed in this business model, but I didn't see it. It yeah. just wasn't showing up for me. And this one or the other one? The, the business, the industry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. I got um, you. So, you know, coming here, I said, okay, it is possible, right? Yeah. And I realized that although we want a quick overnight success, like you say, that doesn't exist, and yeah. it really doesn't. It's you 10 know? years in the making. Yeah. And it, it takes, like you said, 10 years for it to feel like it happened overnight. Yeah. And it's uh, an incredible thing for me. I had to really dig deep and say, what kind of clients do I want to attract? What kind of business do I want? And what kind of person would actually be in that position to manage that stuff. Yep. And I started to change yeah. because I had to. I said, yeah. well, if I'm, if I don't change my, everything will say the same, including my money, yep. right? Including the people around me. So I had to start to get new habits, yeah. right? New habits that were going to be, reflect someone that's going to be successful, a business owner, taking massive accountability mm. for the things that I'm doing mm. on a day to day, because it's easy. It's easy to sit down and say, oh, I wish I had this. But what are you doing about it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so when you say about faith, yeah. right? Yes, you have faith that it's it's going to happen. So that means you are taking action as if that is the only outcome. Yeah. Right. You're not doubting. You can't doubt and have faith at the same time. You know, it's interesting because as I got to know you, the one thing I don't doubt is you always were into action. Even even when you were, you know, selling insurance out of subways, right? An yes. Amazing story. <laughs> like that to me is like, oh my God. When I heard that, I was like, oh my God, this is an incredible, like I, I couldn't believe it. So you had to show up every day. Um, I think your ex four years experience, I think the experience has led you to a path where you still show up every day. But I, well, just when I hear you talk, I'm hearing a level of maturity in your business maturity I'm talking about, like where you're, you're like seeing things a little bit clear. You're talking to business owners that, you know, some of them do 10, 20, 30 million in revenues right now. I, I know we were on the phone a couple of them recently. And I think that at the end of the day, you're now speaking to a different type of client as well, confidently too. 
yeah. between our partnerships and and you know you know whether whether it's somebody from one department or another department you're you're in the game in a way that you may not have been before and you're not blinking you're stepping into it so we know that when um we want to trade time for money we know that disruption creates leaders one of the biggest things that i noticed is that um whoever's liquid in times of economic winter and whoever has a steady head and can just stay focused and energetic and frequency and being able to align with the universe and to really understand what the long-term picture is, but at the same time, take advantage of, of things that are on sale. I believe this is your first experience of things being on sale right now, whether it's real estate going down, the stock market going down, and the folks that are liquid are out there buying businesses left and right. Have you seen that in any of your dealings um, over the last six months and people that you're working with in any part of your life? Whether oh. it's in the business, outside the business. A hundred percent, especially with our clients. Um, and I think you said something great during this time where there's economic winter, there's disruption in that in our world. Oh, yeah. There are a select few that look at that as pure opportunity. Yeah. And they're stepping into that. Yeah. So how do you like when you have in those conversations and you realize that, wait a minute, I'm not like my business is doing well, but there's other people you may know that they're kind of feeling the heat right now with food going up, with gas going up. And there was a time that maybe you did, too, and maybe you still do. I don't know. But I kind of feel like there's a different outlook. When you're around your your peers or, or your top five, are you seeing something that you're not feeling that the rest of the world is feeling? Yes. Sometimes the people that I'm close to, my family, yeah. they may be in a position where their their income is is capped. Yeah. There's no yeah. room for them to control that. And that could be stressful, right? Yeah. When things outside are increasing, but it doesn't reflect in your paycheck. It, it could feel very stressful. Yeah. And as you know, if you have kids and all those things in the mix, it just becomes a whole different game. Yeah, it's funny because my dad worked three jobs and we, not, this is not happening with you, but we ran out of money by like the 21st or 22nd of every month, right? And then there was a, like a seven day struggle and it happened every single month and there was no education in my family when it came to money, like not my mom and dad, right? So I know what that's like. I understand that. And then I understand when, Okay, wait a minute. I'm kind of doing pretty good right now, but they're they're kind of still in that space. Cheering for me, of course, is love, is hugs, is everything else. And there's there's always a for me there was a level of guilt at first, um, but then it's like, how can I help, right? And then you just kind of go through all these different things because at the end of the day, it still takes the person because you could have people that work nine to five but do stuff at night, like drive Uber or do an online business or. You know, the Augusta rule, we keep hearing about that with tax hive <laughs> and everything. Like yeah. all these different things that entrepreneurs do. And I think personally, folks, I don't think I, I'm starting to realize that an entrepreneur is not created. I think you're born with it. That's it. Every single person that works with us through the years and that doesn't work with us, the ones that were entrepreneurs are the ones that stuck around. And the ones that were crazy, crazy enough to just like, you know what, say, I don't work nine to five. I'll work till nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And by the way, it's not work. It's fun. So if you're in a place where it's fun and it's not laborious and you you know your shoulders are going down and you're sad and you're depressed and if you are you could you know you got to figure that out but the point is I think that this is not work this is like an exciting journey right 100% and not everybody has it and and you know and for you folks that watch our show thank you so much watch the channel thank you so much and I'm always going to say if there's any videos you want us to do go ahead and comment below you can always click the link below to set up a time to speak with one of the folks here at Epic they'll take no obligation They'll take you through our success process. They'll take you through, you know, the Epic Financial Freedom Map. Once again, there's no cost if you're just looking for questions to be answered. But, you know, it's been my journey that I think mindset matters. I really believe that if I'm at this income level, this income level, and I want to go higher, you talk about Ed Milet, great book, where he talks about, you know, a, a thermostat of what your money's, what you think your money's worth. I really believe before the money comes, you have to have the proper mindset. I really believe that. You could be lucky enough to get into a partnership and make more money than you should have made, and that'll show itself. I've seen it over and over again. Or you could achieve a certain level of success and start feeling guilty about it and then go back home again, yeah. right? So when it comes to mindset and it comes to abundance and, and money flowing, right? And not money like, oh my God, let me go buy a Mercedes or let me go buy a gold chain or let me go buy a box and company. That was me in 2008, by the way. <laughs> um, but... Money flowing in so I could go to the Ukraine or so I could contribute to CFC recovery or I could contribute to the Ford and be, a, be an AAU coach and help all the kids that got cut from basketball. That was like the greatest feeling in the world that I just got back. I got so addicted to that feeling. So I think that when it comes to mindset, 
abundance, money flow, what Tony Robbins always talks about is contribution, you grow. Contribute more, you grow. And every time we, we make extra money, we're just dumping money back into what this is because we want to get the message out to more and more people. You have phenomenal rituals and habits when it comes to mindset. Can you please share that for some of these folks? Because I think it would be very powerful. 100%. I mean, I think that in, in any business that you're in, it's important to stay at a peak state. You know, you have to be at your best. For me, that is meditation, right? Being able to disconnect from social media, from messages, the moment I wake up, that's what I do. I reset. I'm very big on my connection with God. Mm. I don't consider myself religious. I consider myself more spiritual. Mm. And journaling. Because for me, my mind goes at like 100 miles an hour. So for me to put a pen and paper down and just let that out, it helps me just start my day. Do you actually journal every single night? Like I do. Like every night? Mm -hmm. Really? That's such a great... Like no matter what, you're going to journal. I at least put something on my phone. And is yeah. it like 10 minutes? Like, is there, is it, does it flow? Like, what is that exercise like? I mean, I like to stay in gratitude when I write things down. At the end of the day, I'll reflect if I did the day over. Can or you what explain I do. what that means to stay in gratitude? Because I'm not sure if everybody gets that. Like, mm -hmm. what is the importance of gratitude versus anything else energetically? Well, I'm a big believer in energy and frequency. So, like you said, adjusting the thermostat. Mm. A, whatever it is that you want exists and you have to match it yep. energetically. Match plus. And gratitude is a high frequency emotion. So when we're there, good things happen. So if I'm not in that high, I can't even talk to you energetically. If you, uh, There's no connection, right? Like if right, you're you up here, miss it. Up, I won't even be able to see what's happening. Nope. That's amazing. And so, and I like to show examples with negative emotions because it's really easy to point that out. Yeah. It's like if you wake up late and you're running, like, Oh, yeah. How many times you, you hit your toe with oh, the yeah. end of the table, you get into a car accident, like those things don't happen by accident. Yeah. So for me, it's about pointing out and making the effort to realize what's working, mm. what's actually working. What do I have? I know maybe my coffee spilled or OK, relax, but the I'm little things. the little things, yeah. right? Because it's easy. The world is filled with a lot of negativity and complaining. So it takes effort to step above that. And it takes effort to complain and it takes effort not to complain. You're right. Right? If you want to break the pattern. You know, so Alexa, let me ask you a question. I, the journey you're on is incredible. I see that, you know, the business, you've seen a lot of sides of the business, right? And, you know, there's a good chance that financially things could change. You've always talked about how important your family is to you. What does it look like for the next three or five years? For me, yeah. it is. And the impact you want to have, you know, because I know how important impact is for you, which I love, by the way. I think that's great. I like how you divorce yourself from money other than it's a way to create impact. You don't want to just make money to buy bling. You want to make money so you could have an impact. A hundred percent. I've always felt that. Yeah. I believe that money just makes you more of who you are. Yeah. And I've always been a very generous person. I've wanted to contribute, provide for my family. I see myself making a bigger impact, right? I more. think that um, as I start to level up personally, yep. I will only be able to, to share more of that journey and inspire not just entrepreneurs but women and yep. and latinas because to be true to be honest we i am in a very male dominated industry I know. and it's okay i have no problem with that yeah so i would like to just continue to impact people on in that space because i think it's really important to see someone that looks like you when you want when you want to be in that industry but what's in your heart tell me what's in your heart in my heart. Yeah. Tell me what's in your heart. Seriously. The, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is legacy. Tell me more. Um, my family is probably the biggest reason for everything I do. Can you talk to me more about why it's so powerful for you? Why your family is so important to you? Because I would not be here without them. Yeah. They are my entire support system. Yeah. They're my biggest fans, even if they don't understand what the hell I do. Are you the youngest, <laughs> middle, oldest? I'm the youngest. So you're the baby. Yes. Okay, so I can relate to that. So um, you just a lot like, what is it like the, the dynamic of the family? I am definitely, well, I disrupt oh, you do? a lot. Yeah. Okay. But I bring. Did you disrupt growing up though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. See, I didn't. When I was little, I wanted to make sure everybody, because my family was beautifully crazy, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure they were all happy. Right. Yeah. So I would always act like nothing bothered me. Yeah. I didn't start disrupting until I was older. Until you were older? Yeah. 
I mean, I've always kind of been disruptive yeah. in my own kind of bubble, but I want to provide for them. Mm. I want them to not feel stress. I want them to think bigger and dream bigger. I want to support the things that they are passionate about that they want to do. Um, you know this just personally. I want to retire my mom as soon as possible and That's awesome. fire her. I love and, firing my mom. Yeah, it's great. And I want to be able to contribute to my family in a way that they get to experience things that maybe they never thought they could. Have they seen massive growth in you over the last two years? Like, what is the, if, if they were all right there, what would they be saying about you today versus a year ago? Dead serious. <sighs> they would say that I'm not as much as a brat as I used to be when really? I was a kid. <laughs> so you were a brat. I was. Wow. I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest of three. And I used to, I wasn't always this cheerful. Okay. So, that shows how much work I've done uh, in that area. So, yeah, they would say they're proud of me. They're yeah. proud that I'm taking ownership of my own life. I'm not dependent on a relationship. I'm not dependent on really anyone but myself. I'm yeah. taking accountability, and that's that's awesome. So is there, is there a team that you want to build in this process? Like, what does it look like um, – in the business side of like, because you talked about how you've already paid for folks to come in. To, by the way, is that working? Whoever oh, yeah. Paid, yeah. Yeah. Have you built like a, a good congruent team? And, and it's important for these folks, they can understand the importance of that. Did you put money out for it? Yes. Yeah. And was it scary at first? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because it's tapping into your profit. You're like, oh. And you don't know when you're going to see the, the result of it. So I always talk about it. It took me a million eight to get this thing started three years ago over two years before that. And, you know, for all you entrepreneurs out there, you know how we are, at the end of the day, it's a wild ride. But, you know, for some reason, we are really addicted to the process, not the outcome. You know, and I love staying in the process day to day. And um, for me, it's always been an unbelievable experience of getting to know people and finding people that are just like me. And they come in different shapes, sizes, genders, and everything else. And it's always good when you're able to see that. And then you have to start dealing with you with emotion, relationship capital, personalities. That's like the new phase of where I'm at specifically. But I know exactly where you are. And I know how to kind of say, okay, boom, 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 boom. Stand on my shoulders. Don't make my mistakes because here's the map, right? And you've been running with it unbelievably. And I think that that's a credit to you. Uh, for all the folks that are out there, she travels three days a week, at least 75 miles each way, right? Yes. Uh, to come to the office, because right here, this is where really the heartbeat is of what we do. And the energy here is a little bit different. And I think that if if when you looked at the last couple of places you were at, was there, was there that energy? Was it was it like that? What was, because I know you like to be part of something. I've seen that with you. What was it like at the other spots versus where you are now? For folks that, that you know, maybe they could find a way forward. At my other, like the other company yeah. I worked with? I mean, and I... we're not judging the other company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's not judging. culture and, you know what I mean? No judgment, but there was a lot of, I was held back. Really? Right? So, mm. you know, when you're the person that asks, a common theme. yeah, when you're that person that maybe asks too many questions or asks questions they don't know the answer to. And um, this is interesting. Can you tell, tell the folks how what held back means? Where they could be being held back and they're not aware of it right now. Once again, we're talking about stock trading and time for money. Yeah. Right? Um, Yes, because when you go into any business, you should have a coach, a mentor of some sort. And it always gets to a point, maybe, when they may see you surpassing that, their knowledge. Mm. And it gets uncomfortable because you have to make a decision to to go elsewhere. Is that what happened? And that is what happened. Okay. I had to I had to just cut that relationship in really, terms of business. Were you really good? Did you find yourself advancing fast? And that's because I know you recruit over 100 agents at one point. I mean, yes. You, you, by the way, Alexa used to go into um, clothing stores <laughs> to strike up a conversation with the person working at the clothing store to recruit them to become life insurance licensed folks. I think that is beautifully insane. And anyone that could do that, that's somebody you want to get with when it comes to business because they're not scared. They'll break down any door and they're coachable and they're willing to listen. But if you could talk about that, that was amazing. As well as you were starting to surpass people. Yeah, I just felt that they could, I, you want to model your mentor. And if your mentor is not where you want to be, it's hard. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just, 
you start to ask yourself questions like, why, why am I here? Why am I listening to what you, if I listen to you, I'll have what you have. And if I don't want what you have, it gets, mm. it's, um, it's a slippery slope there. Mm. So, you know, it's funny because, um, I think that when you have a top five and I think when you have a coach and I think that I always say, you want to make sure your coach is at the top and they're in their prime, right? Or whoever you're going to model and mentor or whatever the case may be. But what's interesting is Alexa was in the business and we met through the common, my, my partner, Sean Callagy, who's the founder of Unblinded, and she made her way through Unblinded and that's how we met each other. Yes. And I think what's magical about Unblinded, you know, we talk about it all the time, is their language-based communication on how to go from hello to yes. Which, by the way, when things are on discount, when things are on sale, and when your money's getting right, you can focus on cash flow, and money mindset strategies, and really be able to put money back into your pocket where it belongs. It's important if you want to buy a business to be able to communicate in a way where you're not insulting the seller, number one. You're acknowledging and putting yourself in a position to not only help yourself, but help them, right? Because if they're going to sell it on discount, that means they could be in trouble, but you want to do it with respect. How great is the formula in your communication? Oh, my goodness. The formula changed my life. Talk about it. You know, that was the turning point for me. When I came across Unblinded, they talked about integrous space, human influence, mm. going from hello to yes, with integrity, listening. And it's funny how I was a really bad listener before, <laughs> thinking I was a good one, which is worse. I think we all suffer from that. Yeah. So, and when you're in sales, that's the that's your most important skill that you should develop is being able to not only communicate, but to listen yeah. deeply because yeah. you cannot help someone if you don't know what they want yeah. and they won't tell you unless you're asking the right questions yep. and listening and yeah. picking up on those things. So when I realized that, oh, wow, you can build a business with love, like coming from a place of love. How and awesome is that? and I was like, yeah, I want in like I yeah. want that. So that's when I decided to leave my my previous mentor. And I said, I don't know. Oh, that's right. You were there at the same time. I yeah. And that. I said, I don't know what's next, but it's not this. And I like what I'm hearing here. So I'm mm. going to I'm going to just study this. Wow. And that's kind of how that happened. And how long were you there before you met us? Do you remember? I would say maybe three months. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Three, four months. So, you know, listen, I think that uh, when it comes to proper planning, right, when it comes to being able to kind of control your own money, right, to get multiple use of your money. One of the things that we love doing here is overfunding life insurance policies where they could be leveraged out to either finance your own debt, uh, purchase real estate where you can get seven different rates of return off the same dollar. If you want to learn more, go ahead and click the link below. We'd love to talk about it. Um, and also being able to buy businesses, right? Now, if you're good in sales and if there's a business owner there that's out there that has a sales team that's suboptimal, well, I know some of our partners, what they do is they come in and consult for equity. Right? You have debt for equity, which means they give you a loan, or consult for equity, which means you get a piece of the profits. Right, So I'm sure there's a lot of folks you know, and as your brand gets out there and your message gets out there, that you could go in and do sales training and get a piece of the profit based on what the company does, based on your knowledge of sales and your knowledge of how to build out models. And that's for anybody that's out here right now that's checking us out. You gotta go check out Alexa on Instagram. She's dropping nuggets on a daily basis, giving good information, really kind of getting into the simple messaging. Because at the end of the day, folks, if we keep it simple, instead of getting complicated with part with charts and all kinds of big words, it really doesn't mean anything unless you're a master at one thing, Bruce Lee style, 10,000 times. If you could do that, and if you could own that space, you would be amazed at what kind of revenue you could you could bring in. However, if you have a why and it's your family and you want to make impact and you want to be able to serve and contribute, you'd really be amazed at what you could do because the money would start flowing to you. It's your responsibility to do the right thing with that money. Make hard decisions, of course. And um, I can't thank you enough for being on today. Right? Thank you for having me. And um, really, your message is unbelievable. Thank you so much. And if they want to reach out, once again, they can click the link. You'll have your calendar as well and they can book an appointment. And just spend some time, some conversation pieces, no obligation, and really answer any questions that folks may have. Thank you for checking us out. Looking forward to seeing you again. Continue to follow. We're dropping nuggets daily.